Well, as the NHL season is about to begin here in the DFW Metroplex, the MLB season has come to an end. Today, I'm joined by the host of the Locked On Texas Rangers podcast, Bryce Patrick, to talk all things baseball, hockey, and how those things connect and correlate uh, in some ways that you might not fully expect. All of this and more on today's episode of Locked On Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis. So glad that you're able to join me on the show today. Today's episode is brought to you by Fantrax. Fantrax is free. NHL Fantasy Hockey Manager is the most customizable, easy to use, and feature-rich platform in the industry. Sign up for free today at Fantrax.com slash locked on. Thank you again for joining us today on the Locked On Stars podcast, your first listen of the day. Today's episode is a very special one. Uh, I got to have a great conversation with Bryce Patrick over at Locked On Texas Rangers to talk all things baseball with the Texas Rangers season that just wrapped up a few days ago. Um, and we got to hear some thoughts from Bryce on this upcoming hockey season as well. I mean, we just got to talk about uh, the DFW sports landscape and kind of how the Rangers and Stars fit into that. Um, alongside some of the biggest powerhouses in the sports world like the Dallas Cowboys and Dallas Mavericks. So I really hope you enjoy the conversation. It was a ton of fun for Bryce and I to record um, and just to talk to one another. So I know you'll enjoy it. Um, stick around all the way through the end of the of the conversation to hear some fun questions that we asked one another um, about uh, just our respective teams and what it might look like if, if things got shaken up a little bit in terms of the sports that our team's players play. So without any further ado, here's the conversation that I got to have with Bryce Patrick of Locked On Rangers. Welcome in hockey and baseball fans to this special edition crossover of Locked On Stars and Locked On Rangers. I am joined by the host of Locked On Rangers, Bryce Patrick, and we are here to talk about all things um, Dallas Stars hockey and Texas Rangers baseball. Bryce, how are you today? I'm good. Uh, I'm doing well. I'm ready for for hockey season. Um, uh, yeah. In case your listeners are curious, I am the host of the Baseball Rangers podcast. Uh, uh, planning to do some kind of fun crossover. I don't know, maybe in like February or something, with the host of the Locked On uh, Rangers hockey podcast. Um, but it's good to have you as as a part of the network, Dane. Um, for those of you who don't know who my Rangers fans, I think I just told you a little bit in the pre show that I have not recorded yet. Um, so I'm not <laughs> forecasting in the future, but Dane is our new host of locked on Dallas stars. Um, you can find him on YouTube. Um, Rangers fans who are also fans of hockey. Um, go check him out. He's got a great show. Glad to have you as a part of the network. This is, this is a lot of fun. I have not, I've actually, I have done one crossover episode with a locked on hockey host um, of the Carolina hurricanes, but we talked about, baseball he is watching a bunch of rangers minor leaguers over there in carolina so um it should be a lot of fun gotcha yeah that's uh that's awesome i was about to ask what the connection was there with the texas <laughs> rangers and, and carolina hurricanes but that's a that's a unique way to get some insight on on prospects and whatnot uh and sure. certainly looking forward to um the ultimate rangers collaboration down the road with the new york rangers who happen to to wear the same colors as well so that won't be confusing at all i imagine <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm super excited to have you on the show, super excited to be a part of the network and um, take part in in what I hope is the first of many um, DFW crossovers because we have a lot of great sports teams here in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex um, and a lot of great hosts that cover the shows as well. Um, but I just kind of wanted to, to take a moment with Bryce and kind of talk through um, some questions about the Rangers and then um, later on in the show, we'll talk about uh, the Dallas Stars a little bit. Um, and then we'll just cut, we, we've kind of formulated some fun questions for one another um, that we'll get to kind of at the end, but jumping right into some questions about the Rangers. Um, what was it kind of like this season covering a team that is, um, I think many would say, uh, and, and I'm, I know certainly you would say are in a rebuild, um, but still has a lot of potential. I think we saw a lot of good things from the Rangers kind of near the end of the season, as far as young guys go, um, guys that were kind of called up from the minors or even Adolis Garcia having a phenomenal season. Uh, so what, what can you say? Um, it was like covering a team that's in a rebuild that has a lot of potential and could be knocking on the doors of the playoffs within the next few seasons. 
Yeah, well, it was uh, definitely among the worst seasons that I've covered. Um, I've been writing about the Rangers or covering them in some capacity since 2014. Um, so, of course, that was my first year. And so I delved very deeply into minor leagues that year. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to look at this major league team. Everything's crap um, and everyone's hurt. So there wasn't much you could glean from it. This year, it's like, all right, the team was going to be bad from the start. We knew that. Um and it was definitely tough. Adolis Garcia is definitely one of the big stories of this year. Um, Joey Gallo leaving. Um, I don't know how much Locked On Rangers you listened to, but um, ver- very first half of this this season, it was basically a Joey Gallo um, podcast. So um, him leaving is like, you know, imagine there's a star's prospect that you followed basically from the time that they get drafted. They're a guy who has huge upside, um, but like also a lot of question marks if they're ever if they'll ever get there. Um, even to the major leagues or, you know, get anywhere close to fulfilling their potential. Then they do that. And also when they're doing that, people don't recognize and appreciate how good that player is. And then you're seeing that and they're on this terrible, terrible team. And you think, okay, they want to be here. They say they want to be here. And then you off your team offers them like an extension. That's an absolute insult. And so you have to trade them for basically a, a decent haul of prospects but that none of which are going to be anywhere near that player. Um, that was kind of this season in a nutshell. It was really rough down the stretch. Um, there were definitely some big fun stories, some players with potential. There's not a whole lot of like star potential on here right now. Um, there's a few guys with some star potential in the minor leagues. Um, but the thing about the baseball season is it just keeps going. It does not stop. Um, but Dane Dunning was a solid development this year. Um, he's a 26 year old. He's going to be around for quite a while. He was the main piece in the Lance Lynn trade. Um, he showed he is at least a major league average pitcher. They kind of limited his innings this year because again, they're in a rebuild. So like, you're not exactly trying to win. Um, but you know, he's shown some solid potential. Taylor Hearn was a guy who I saw in the minor leagues back when he first got here. He's a guy from the area, um, from Royce city, Texas. He's 26 years old. He had a really just honestly one of the worst major league debuts that I've ever seen pitched a third of an inning in Seattle back, I believe in 2017, um, allowed like eight runs and got hurt and was out for the season. Um, and had not started another game until this year did really great in the bullpen this year, then transitioned to being a starter, had some really, really strong starts, um, and ended up being probably their second best starter at the end of the season. So, um, definitely a huge developmental win there from him. And then Joe Barlow, who's a guy who is a 25 year old, I believe was a six round pick from a community college in, uh, Utah. Um, excuse me, 11th round pick out of Salt Lake community college in Utah had some potential in the bullpen and then didn't quite live up to it. This was the year like, all right, we're going to call him up to see what he can do. Um, did some work with, um, baseball's resident smart guys up in the, um, Pacific Northwest as millennials love that area and really <laughs> um, kind of found himself. Uh, the slider looked much better, was able to cut down those walks and just was absolutely dominant, absolutely dominant out of the pen in um, 31 innings and might be the Rangers closer next year and for many years to come. So um, yeah, the the bright spots were kind of few and far between. Kyle Gibson was a lot of fun. Um, sad he couldn't get to pitch in the postseason, but um, definitely a fun uh a fun, you know, first half of the season story to watch for this Rangers team. Yeah, absolutely. And it, you mentioned Kyle Gibson. I had f- completely forgotten about the storyline of him going to, was it Philadelphia that he mm-hmm. that he got traded to? It did. Yeah, um, I, I remember early in the season, like seeing his numbers and um, some like people on Twitter tweeting about the early Cy Young race and talking about him as a, you know, someone who's putting up those kind of numbers. And so crazy that that many moves happened this season. And um, obviously the Rangers, hitting the really, really bad cold street kind of starting a little before the all-star break, but especially coming out of the all-star break, uh, a, a storyline I've forgotten. So yeah, sad, sad that we don't get to see uh, Gibson in the postseason. Um, Gallo, at least at the time that we're recording, this is in the postseason. Uh, the Yankees play the Red Sox tonight. Um, we'll see uh, if he goes 0 for 4 or if he goes 3 for 3 um, with, you know, three home runs, two home runs, whatever it might be. You never really know what you're going to get with Joey Gallo. Uh, but what what would you say? Obviously, you touched on a lot of pitchers that that showed a lot of upside, especially uh, Dane Dunning. He has a really nice name and he pitches well, so uh, that uh, that that always is a nice mixture. But what would you say um, besides maybe Adolis Garcia? Who are some other guys, whether they're prospects or guys on the current MLB roster? Um, who are some guys that Rangers fans should be getting excited for um, on the offensive side 
uh, of the lineup for the Rangers in the coming seasons. Well, that that was the most frustrating part of this year because I I've watched a lot of bad baseball teams. Like I've watched bad baseball games, and like I can deal with the Rangers getting lit up for a bunch of runs. Like that's fine. I can handle it. It's okay. I know how to deal with all that nonsense. Um, but watching a bad offense, it is brutal. And this year was just really bad offensively. I mean, Adolis Garcia was unbelievable in the month of June. One of the best hitters in baseball, um, but really fell back to earth in some of those other months. Um, had a really rough July, uh, really, really tough August. And, you know, it actually, no, a better August, excuse me, and a really tough September. Um, he was going for the rookie home run record um, in a season set by Pete Incavelia back in the 90s. Um, he was at 29 going into the month of September. Like, okay, he's got it in the bag. He's got a whole month to hit two home runs. He's got to hit 31. 31 or 30 is the record, and uh, 31 would break it. September 14th, he finally hit number 30. And it was, wasn't until the last day of September that he finally hit number 31. <laughs> he had two home runs in the whole <laughs> month of September. We're like, okay, come on, Adolis. Please, please, you just need like one more. Come on, man. Um, so, yeah, that was rough. Nathaniel Lowe is a guy who the Rangers traded for when they already had a guy who I thought was fine at first base, um, an elite defender in Ronald Guzman, and I thought had really turned the corner. Um, but they basically decided that uh, Nathaniel Lowe was going to be their everyday first baseman, so they gave him those at-bats. Um, he was probably their most consistent offensive player that was there at the end of the season. Um, obviously, Joey Gallo was significantly better than him, um, but the offense was um, – not great, but if you're looking for guys that are on the doorstep that are definitely going to be there next year, um, there is one name and one name only that you need to know. That is uh, Josh Young, um, my beloved Red Raider, um, Rackham Tech. I saw him there when he was a freshman, and um, my one of my proudest, you know, no, what is it, uh, Nostradamus e kind of moments is seeing him as a freshman in college, thinking that guy's going to be a first round pick, and you know what he was. He was a Rangers first round pick, um, I believe eighth overall back in 2018. He's a guy who has hit at every single level. There are some questions about his power. He has put those questions right to bed. Yeah, uh, eighth overall in 2019. Um, absolutely mashed in double uh, A AA and triple A this year. The thought was he was going to be up at the major league level by the end of the season, but a foot injury took off about the first month, month and a half of his season. Um, so he was delayed in that season, only played 78 this ga games this year in the minors, but hit 19 home runs, um, absolutely smashed at every single level, decent defender, but man, this team needs some offense. And I would be absolutely floored if he is not the Rangers everyday starting third baseman at the beginning of next season. Yeah, certainly. I think if he can get his defensive play up, I think he and uh, Isaiah Kiner for left can be a formidable force, at least on the defensive side, um, covering, covering the left side of the infield. Um, and I know Sam Huff is another guy that played really, really well, or at least hit balls really far uh, at the minor league level this season. Um, coming up next, we're going to be continuing this conversation um, with Bryce from Locked On Rangers. Um, but before we do that, I want to take a moment and tell you about some of our sponsors for today's episode. And the first one of those being Shopify. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big businesses. So upstarts, startups, and established businesses alike can sell anywhere, everywhere, synchronized and online in-person sales, and effortlessly stay informed. Scaling your business is a journey of endless possibility. Shopify has the tools and resources that make it easy for any business to succeed from down the street to around the globe. Reach customers online and across social networks with an ever-growing supply channel of integration and apps, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and more. Gain insights as you grow your, with detailed reporting of conversion rates, profit margins, and beyond. More than a store, Shopify grows with you. This is a possibility powered by Shopify. Go to shopify.com slash locked on NHL, all lowercase letters there, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash locked on NHL right now. That's shopify.com slash locked on NHL. Today's episode is also brought to you by Fantrax. Fantasy hockey season is fast approaching and I'm going to give you the inside track on the absolute best fantasy hockey platform in the industry. It's obviously Fantrax, as I said a few seconds ago. 
Fantrax's free NHL Hockey League Manager is the most customizable, easy to use, and feature-rich platform in the industry. Sign up for free today, and as a special offer for Lockdown Stars fans, you'll be entered to win an official NHL-signed Nathan McKinnon jersey. Simply go to Fantrax.com slash LockedOn and sign up today. Fantrax is the top dynasty fantasy hockey platform in the industry. Have you been hosting your season-long leagues on another platform? Not a problem. Fantrax can import any of your current leagues for free and customize if needed. Fantrax is the most customizable platform in the industry, offering the greatest fantasy experience for your dynasty, keeper, redraft, and best ball leagues. If you've had leagues on Yahoo or ESPN, migrate to Fantrax for a better experience. Fantrax Commissioner Tools allow you to create your fantasy league exactly the way you want. Do you want more player position eligibility? Are you a fan of head-to-head leagues, points, category, best ball? Fantrax has all of that. Among the most trusted names in fantasy sports, offering hockey, football, baseball, basketball, college basketball, college football, golf, soccer, and even NASCAR. If there's anything lacking in your current fantasy league manager, Fantrax likely has it. Fantasy sports doesn't sleep, and neither does Fantrax, with seasons running 365 days a year. There's a reason why fantasy players who try Fantrax make it their permanent home for all their fantasy leagues. Again, sign up for free today and be entered to win an official NHL-signed Nathan McKinnon jersey. Simply go to Fantrax.com slash LockedOn and sign up today. That's Fantrax.com slash LockedOn. Fantrax, home of fantasy sports. Jumping back into today's crossover episode between Locked On Stars and Locked On Rangers, uh, Bryce and I are going to continue our conversation just kind of talking about um, we just covered uh, the Rangers this past season and kind of their season coming to a close um, only a few days ago. And now um, we're just going to take a moment for for Bryce to kind of ask some questions about the Stars and um, just to give me a chance to fill in Stars fans, but also you um, Rangers fans, guys that have been listening to Bryce. Um, just kind of answer some questions that you might have as hockey season is rapidly approaching. So, Bryce, what do you got for me? Well, I got a lot of questions. Um, <clears throat> first off, my main question about this season is what is Ben Bishop? Like, what what is the deal there? I know he's been hurt. He missed all of last season. He showed at times um, my my one good hockey tweet. Um, I, it was in the playoffs when he was absolutely <laughs> killing it. Um, I said Ben Bishop has been great upgraded to Ben Pope. Um, and then a guy <laughs> named Ben Pope followed me um, because the guy in question, Ben Pope, covers the Chicago Blackhawks um, for uh, the Chicago, I believe, Sun Times, their uh, newspaper up there. Um, so that was fun. Um, but my question is, is is Ben Pope done? Is he washed? Is like, what's what's the deal with with that man? Man, there there is so much to unpack there. I mean, that is a great question, and, and I'm I'm laughing in my head a lot harder than I am out loud <laughs> at that tweet because uh, that is that is truly amazing that 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 happened. Um, but Ben Bishop, like you said, is a guy that was absolutely lights out in the 2019 playoffs. Um, took the team all the way to Game Seven of of the Western Conference semifinals, where they ultimately lost to the Stanley Cup champion St. Louis Blues in Game Seven. Um, and then in the following season, 2019, 2020, um, did not really play a whole lot up until the postseason in the bubble in Edmonton, where I believe it was Game Four against Colorado in, in the semifinals of that playoffs as well. Um, he just looked so bad; he looked awful, which we came later to find out that he was playing with an injured knee. Um, and so he had surgery on the knee, like you said, missed all of last season, um, still has yet to play this preseason. Um, and I actually saw a tweet um, from Mike Heiko, the Stars uh, senior staff writer, um, or like just before we hopped onto this this call, um, that he that Rick Bonus, the coach of the Stars, not planned to play Ben Bishop this season, um, or the, the preseason, excuse me. Um, but it's to be determined as far as the regular season goes. I personally would love to see um, Ben Bishop, Ben Pope, if you will, um, come back and be who he was prior to his injury. Um, because he, like I said, he was lights out. Um, he, you know, it was almost impossible to score on him. It was just, um, obviously, he, you know, you can only be perfect for so long and the offense on the stars wasn't doing a whole lot to help him in those playoffs in 2019. Um, and so obviously we, it, we it like, Anton the, it looked at the Rangers offense this year. honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. On, honestly. And the, the stars offense is if this preseason has even shown anything can be wildly inconsistent where they can give up four goals in the first period and not score any, but then, you know, score three or four unanswered in the second and third period. So a lot of inconsistency, which I know the Rangers are, are notorious for that as well. Uh, didn't they, they scored like five or six runs in the first inning on opening day in Kansas city, but then gave up like five or six back yep, at the, yep. in the bottom of the first. That's exactly what happened. Um, yeah. Kyle Gibson's yeah. one 
truly horrendous start of the year. He only <laughs> went, I think, like two thirds of an inning and just weird opening day set the tone for a weird and bad season. Oh, yeah. A lot, lot of parallels uh, between the Stars and Rangers, as we are finding out. Um, but yeah, as much as I and I know other Stars fans love Anton Hudobin and um, wouldn't say love Braden Holtby yet, as we've only seen him um, in, two, I believe, one or two games. And I believe he's um, in net tonight for the preseason game against the St. Louis Blues. Um, uh, and he has shown a lot of upside. And he's a former Stanley Cup champion with the Washington Capitals in 2018 and a Vizina winner as well, won the NHL's best goalie award. I can't remember what season that was. I want to say 15 or 16 um, with Washington as well. Um, but he has shown a lot of potential, and we know that he can be a good goalkeeper. Um, but you obviously, were, if we can... You were right, by the way. I just looked it up. Uh, it was 2015-16. Yes. I, I talked about it in, a, in an episode, uh, I believe it was last week or two weeks ago, and so I was having to recall that one off the top of my head. Also thank won you. a William M. Jennings trophy, whatever that is. I, I I have so many questions about hockey trophies, but you know that would be a whole <laughs> other episode. <laughs> it, honestly, it might need to be for me too, because as I continue to host this show, I'm learning about trophies that, that I didn't even know existed. And hockey trophies are so fun because they have like names to them. Like, And, and I know so that's the case for some other leagues, but it's like, you know, in the NFL, it's like, oh, if you're the MVP, like you're the MVP, you know, but if you win the MVP in the NHL, you win. Uh, oh, gosh. The Art Ross trophy. Yes. Yes. I, oh. Wait, or is it? No, I think that's the heart. Is Art Ross the, right. the scoring title? Yes. I don't. Yes. But like they don't have like the like some of the trophies like uh, like the Cy Young Award. That's the only one in baseball. It's like, yes. that's the, the pitching one. And there's some that are like um, the like so and so. This award it's like it's like college awards like the Bolitnikov, the ray guy the uh whatever archie manning or whatever yeah. other awards let's see okay yes the heart memorial trophy is for the mvp of the league in the nhl okay. art ross is for points okay so i i always confuse those two and then you have vizina best goalkeeper calder's the best rookie um so on so forth but yeah yeah uh honestly would love to see ben bishop incorporate himself back into the lineup for dallas um, but obviously, if, if he's not able to be the guy who he once was a few seasons ago, or even if he doesn't play a lot this season, I think the goalkeeper situation is in good hands if you know Ben and Holtzby can stay healthy. And of course, if they can't, we have Jake Ottinger, who will be um, down at the AHL level playing in Cedar Park for the Texas Stars. Um, but he he proved that he has a lot of potential last season having to to kind of fill that role of, of backup goalkeeper to Anton Hedobin. Yeah, Uh Mike, I was about to ask about that because he he looked really solid last year. Um, but I want to ask about some of these young guys who look like they're going to be the future of the Stars team. Obviously, like the guy for the future is uh, Miro Haskinen, um, a guy with a lot of potential. Um, but the two guys that I absolutely love watching um, are uh, Rope Hintz and uh, Dennis Guriano, Gur Gurianov. Excuse me. Um, Kuryanov. That's not how they say things in Soviet <laughs> Russia. Um, in Texas, that's how you, they say it. <laughs> that's Dennis Kuryanov right there. I tell you what, that guy's got some real, real some power. He's a, he's a son of a gun. I tell you what. Um, <laughs> but what are you expecting for from those guys and from Miro um, in terms of taking the next step of their development this year um, and kind of helping push this team towards the playoffs and maybe even another deep playoff run. Well, I think that, that Miro Haskin, and to kind of start with him, um, I think that there's a lot of expectations on him this season from the fan base, but also obviously from the front office um, with him just signing an eight-year um, extension worth you know, $67 million. And so they're paying him a lot of money to have him in Dallas for the long term. Um, and so there's obviously high expectations that he uh, is going to outperform himself from the past few seasons, which I think he's very capable of doing. Um, and I think that he, every you year that he's Really eight years 63 better. million dollars i believe it was 67 that that sounds about like what the offer the rangers gave joey gallo for that extension <laughs> <laughs> was it eight years uh no it was okay. um i want to say it was like four years and uh, 82 million 85 million dollars um oh my so gosh like just um which for him that's like an absolute insult like they didn't make a counter offer um but anyway you're talking about Mira Haskin and kicking major butt, which is always music to my ears. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that he is going to be um, the leader of of that defensive unit, especially even with the addition of Ryan Suter in the offseason. Um, I, I think Suter will kind of be um, provide some veteran experience, but I think overall Mira Haskin will be leading the charge and um, just being a force on defense and causing issues for the opposing team's offensive attack. Um, but Miro can also 
sneak in a few shots from from the blue line from the top of the offensive zone um and so that makes him a dangerous player that you have to watch on both sides of the ice um and as far as Rupe Hintz and Denis Gurionov those are two guys that um I really enjoy talking about on this show just because like you said they are the feature of this team uh and, and Rupe Hintz especially just the way that he moves on the ice and the speed that he moves with whenever he's not injured, which he was battling a lot of injuries last season as well, which was like the story of the Dallas Stars last year, um, battling injuries. Uh, whenever he is unaffected by injuries, um, one of the best skaters on the team and just the way that he is able to move, either whether he has the puck or not, um, is just unmatched by almost anyone else on the team. Um, and maybe one of the people that could be in contention for that is Dennis Garyanov, another young guy um, who I think more people in the NHL um, are going to, take notice of this season. I think a lot of Stars fans know about Dennis um, Gurianov, Gurianov, however you want to say it. Uh, but I think that this season um, playing on the second or third line for Dallas, which is incredible to have a player that talented, that young, um, not even being on our first line, but getting to play, um, playing less minutes, but still playing effective minutes and playing with some other really good players. Um, some other guys like Jamie Ben or Tyler Sagan. So it'll be really exciting to see how those guys develop this season. Um, as they're looking to potentially sign extensions of their own. I don't know if they'll be as big as Miro Haskinen, because as you know, uh, no sports team just has an unlimited amount of money, though some organizations like to pretend that they do. Uh, I mean, and the, then worry the about Dodgers it later. do, but like nobody else is the Dodgers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, no no one, or at least the Rangers and Stars, are, are not the Dodgers. But yeah, um, I do have a question about Dennis Gurionov's minutes. Um, I think that was one of the big first, at least for me personally and um my former co-host morgan price um she did a, a petty ice time chart for every uh every period of like just tracking who gets the most minutes um why do you think Gurianov's minutes were so low last season e even when he was uh doing well it felt like he wasn't quite getting enough minutes to make a big impact yeah i i was also confused by that because it I never really seemed um that he was dealing with a lot of injuries which i feel like the stars were very open about letting us know like hey you're not seeing Tyler Sagan because he's hurt and had surgery. You're not seeing Alexander Radulov or Rupe Hintz or Ben Bishop for the same reason. Um, and so I would just have to imagine that maybe the coaching staff kind of knew where the stars were in terms of a playoff hunt um, during the season, which honestly they almost made the playoffs despite all the injuries and setbacks with COVID and the, the tough scheduling. Uh, but I, I imagine that the coaching staff was attempting to get more minutes um, for some of our younger guys. Uh, and, and Dennis is a younger guy, but I, we were playing with a lot of guys that were at the prospect level or guys that hadn't seen a lot of NHL minutes. Um, so I would just have to imagine kind of putting myself in the mind of Rick Bonus uh, that he's trying to delve out the minutes, not necessarily evenly, because I think Dennis can have got a few more minutes. Uh, or maybe he saw some things in practice that he liked from other guys that led him to play those other guys more. But hopefully this season um, with the fully healthy roster and obviously with a, a new schedule and uh, more spaced out, even schedule that's not going to be as demanding on the players. Dennis will get a few more minutes uh, to complement some of those guys I mentioned earlier, Ben, Sagan, Radulov, whoever he might be out there with on the second or third line for Dallas. That makes a lot of sense. Um, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to you know, go back and forth with all kinds of fun crossovery Rangers stars questions coming up right after this word from our sponsors. Oh, absolutely. Let me tell you about some of those sponsors uh, for today's episode. And another one of those is an all-time classic. You love it. We love it here at Locked On Podcast Network. And it's Built Bar. Did you know mm -hmm. that Built Bar has so many delicious flavors? There's something for everyone. When you talk to a Built Bar fan, they're definitely passionate about their favorite flavors. If you don't know the Built Bar flavors, well, you're missing out. But it's okay because I'm going to name them for you right now. They have coconut, cherry barcia, raspberry, mint brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel, strawberry, orange, cookies and cream, and German chocolate. If you feel overwhelmed by the amount of flavors that I just read, that's okay because Built Bar has your back. They'll send you two of those flavors out of the nine that they have. If you order online, you can choose the option to get two of the nine flavors in your box instead of just one. And not only are Built Bar flavors the best tasting, but they're also healthy and good for you. They have 17 to 18 grams of protein, calories that range from 130 to 180, only four to five grams of sugar and only four to five grams of net carbs. Amazing flavors, all tasty, all healthy. You can go to built.com and use promo code locked 15 and you'll get 15% off your order. Again, use promo code locked 15 for 15% off at built.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by bet online. Bet online is back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back for another football season. 
As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Don't forget to use our promo code Locked On to receive your bonus. From football, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all of your favorite sports. Bet Online, where the game starts. Jumping back in to the conclusion of today's uh, crossover between Locked On Stars and Locked On Rangers with Bryce Patrick. Um, like Bryce said, before we kind of jump to the ad break, we're just going to take a moment and just uh, ask some fun, more lighthearted uh, questions about our respective teams and just kind of um, what it's, yeah, just tackling some questions about some of the DFW, I guess, lesser known or lesser uh, Less appreciated. teams. Yeah. And, and I mean, for, for big reasons, I mean, you have America's team playing across the street from uh, the Rangers. And, that, and that's kind of one question I wanted to ask. What What is it like for you and, and what, do you, what do you think, uh, or I guess, I don't know if advice is the right, but what's something we can kind of say to like current fans, obviously the people listening to this show are people that might stumble across it, a Rangers or Stars fan, um, about the two teams. I, I think the Stars and Rangers are both teams that have good followings and have strong fan bases, but obviously, you know, you have the Dallas Cowboys, one of the biggest, if not the biggest sports brand in the entire world, um, and the Mavericks uh, playing at the American Airlines Center with the Stars as well with, uh, you know, generational talent like Luka Doncic. Um, what do you think the advantage of, of also kind of tuning into the smaller what it might feel like a smaller market team in the DFW area uh, is like for kind of the casual DFW fan. I don't know if that made any sense at all. <laughs> I think it made sense. It, yeah. it made sense at least in my head. So, you know, I feel like that counts. You know, it's kind of wild that like how little attention the Rangers got. I mean, honestly, like I, I don't blame any fan for like, like there's no rules of fandom, like just be a fan of whatever. But like, I don't blame anyone for tuning out when the Rangers were absolutely trash at like the middle of the season, even the beginning of the season, just like knowing like, all right, this is going to be a rough one. Um, I want to go watch some Dallas wings. Cause that's or FC Dallas. Cause those are the other teams that are going during the yeah. regular season, but like during the star season, there's Mavs going on, even in the same building, there's football going on. Um, and then, well, I guess in like, you know, March and, and April, <laughs> it's basically just hockey and uh, baseball season. Um, and I guess March Madness season too, but that's yeah, true. it's kind of weird being a team, but that's one of the things I loved about, I love about like new age sports media and like specifically our podcast is that like, if you're thinking, ugh, all the national news, all the, the local paper or all the athletic or whatever media outlet you consume, all they talk about is the, uh, is, you know, the Cowboys and occasionally the maps or like, we got daily podcasts here um, about the Rangers and the stars. So if you're like, I want to hear more about the Rangers or I want to hear more about the stars, you know where you can get it. There are also more specialized blogs, more specialized writers and stuff. And so it's kind of nice being able to have your own niche, carve out that niche. I mean, there wasn't, I don't know if there's any other daily stars podcast. I know there's no other daily Rangers podcast. And if there are, well, they're not as good as mine. So um, it's <laughs> nice right. to be able to kind of <laughs> carve out that niche and be like, yeah, if you want, if you want the content, it's there. You might have to go look for it because I'm not the most famous person um, in DFW sports media. But, you know, I'm getting there. I got my blue check mark on Twitter. So I, I'm got to <laughs> get at least like halfway there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're well on your way. If, you, if you've got that blue check mark, you can you can do anything. So I'm told. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm ashamed <laughs> to say how much joy and like you know, smugness it brought me and how badly I've wanted it for so long. I'm like, I got a journalism degree. I work at a major, you know, a major podcasting company i work for a major news outlet why is it taking me so long let them know that i'm a real person and semi-important in some circles <laughs> oh yeah yeah i saw how many locked on hosts like once i got brought onto the network and even before i started hosting like had the check mark and i was like oh they got it because they're a locked on host so like the first day like the day my first episode went up i like applied for verification on twitter and they were it took like two minutes for them to be like yeah no we're not verifying you um, so, so we'll see, maybe, maybe one day, uh, we'll get there, but yeah, I, I agree, uh, you know, that, that it's fun to have like our, even if it is a smaller audience, like to have, um, like the faithful and loyal, loyal listeners that tune into our shows consistently. Um, and, and obviously as we've mentioned, like the fan bases for both these teams are great. And as is the case for rightfully so the other teams, I, I'm not trying to, and I know 
we're, we're both not trying to sound bitter by any means because the Cowboys um, I'm a obviously having a, a <laughs> <laughs> maybe just a little bit. Uh, but yeah, the Cowboys obviously having a fantastic season so far, and the Mavericks are an- anticipating a big season this year. Um, so it's exciting um, at the end of the day to just kind of take a, a wider look. And, you know, if you're a fan of all four teams, that's great. If you only follow, you know, the Stars and Rangers or one of those teams, or you're only an FC Dallas fan, a uh, Dallas Wings fan, you do you. If you're a fan of those teams and you're listening to this podcast, you might be lost, but we're glad you're here regardless. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, glad you're here anyway. Yeah, yeah. And if you've made it, uh, I think we're like 33 minutes in and you've stayed this long, you're a, you're a real one. So <laughs> a lot of respect. Um but kind of another fun question that, that I had uh, brought to mind that I originally wanted to just kind of start with one player, but now uh, want to expand per uh, you saying that you think it would be fun before we started recording. If you had to create um, kind of like a starting lineup of current Rangers players that were on the roster this season and make a hockey team out of them, who would you put where and why? It doesn't necessarily have to be the full roster, but when you think of... So you're saying that I can use Joey Gallo because I'm going to anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. You use Joey Gallo. Yeah, and... and uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to throw in, uh, I was going to say managers. I don't know where <laughs> Chris Woodward is going to go on this <laughs> roster. But if you have a place in, in your head for Chris Woodward on this roster, by all means. <laughs> well, I'll create my starting my starting lineup. Um, I'm making sure that my, my hockey math is right. There's the, the three forwards, the left wing, the center, the right wing, and then two defenders and a goalie. Am I, yes. am I correct in that? Okay. Yes. Um, well, I feel like the goalie is the easiest one because it, it's just basically straight up catcher. Um, I love Jose Trevino. I don't know that he's big enough. I mean, he might be. He he's probably a one because I mean, in terms of Rangers starting catcher, it was kind of like um the stars starting goalies last year, and kind of there was a one A and a one B. Um, but I'd say Trevino and Jonah Heim are um definitely the goalies there. Um, Joey Gallo, I'm I'm gonna put him on the right wing. You know, he's probably got a left-handed shot if he if he does do hockey. He grew up in Las Vegas, so I'm not assuming he grew up. With playing a lot of hockey, probably, um, probably not. But he's a big, strong man, and uh, oh, yeah. he made the transition from third base to Gold Glove right fielder. So um, the transition to hockey, so I'm sure, would be fine. And I'm sure his his slap shot is probably just as powerful as his home run swing, and he will put a hole through the net and through the boards um, with how hard he's hitting that ball. Um, I would be terrified to to have a, a Joey Gallo baseball coming at me and also a puck. My gosh, absolutely Imagine the glass just shattering terrified. In front of you. <laughs> absolutely terrified. Um, let's see. On the left wing, you know what? I'm I'm gonna be basic. I'm gonna put um, you know, I'm actually I'm gonna put Adolis Garcia back on on defense. Um, kind of work my way okay. around looking at this. Um, he's a big guy. He's incredibly fast. Um, you know, he swings and misses a whole lot. So I don't know what that I want him. Um you know, getting set up for those slap shot opportunities. Like he might, he might miss a few. Um, so yeah, I'm going to put him on the back of my defensive pairing and along with him. Oh gosh, this is so weird. Um, but you know what? I'm going to put Ronald Guzman there. Um, Ronald Guzman is listed at six, five. I swear he's at least six, eight. That dude is absolutely massive. So um, big. The Rangers did him wrong by trying to play him in the outfield. Um, so I'm going to do him even wronger by trying to put him on the on <laughs> hockey ice. Um, and I'm sure the condor, that's his nickname, because his, his wingspan is probably longer than an actual condor. Um, so I put him there on my defensive pairing. Um, at center, I don't. what are the qualities that make a good center? What are something some descriptors that I should look for in these guys? I think a lot of times the center... Um, and maybe it kind of depends on your team and who you have, but a lot of times I think they're kind of the facilitator of the offense. Okay. Um, yeah, you look at guys like Jamie Ben, and it's weird because guys can like transition even in midseason sometimes from playing like the wing to the center, depending on injuries or if the coach sees something in practice or a game that he's like, oh, I might want to switch this. Uh, so, and, and obviously, like Jamie Ben is the star's captain, but he also plays center, so uh, leader on on the ice as like the way he plays, but also leader of the team as well. So I don't know if that's something you want to factor in uh, when making, when making your decision. You know, I think I might. Um, Dane Dunning um, is, you know, passer, like I guess pitching and pass. That's about as close to yeah. a comparison <laughs> as you can get. Um, he's, he's big dude, 6'4", 225 is what he's listed at. Um, you know, not afraid to be, might not be afraid to be physical. I don't know. I don't know what he'd look like on the ice, but um, I would like to see it um, because I think that would be fun and uh, definitely very interesting. Um, And then on my left wing, uh, I'm just going to pull this out of left field um, and, and say uh, 
DJ Peters because actually no, I'm gonna say Willie Calhoun. I think that'd be mm. weird, weird, really weird. He's lefty. Um, I I assume that you want the the righties with the left hand or the lefties with the left handed shot on the right wing and the righties on the left wing. But Jamie Ben plays left wing sometimes and he's left handed. So screw it. I'm yeah. gonna go Willie Calhoun. Um, he's a gamer. I just want to see more of Willie Calhoun. Um, but he's also been hurt a lot. He has also been beat up by hit by pitches. Missed a lot of time. Got hit in the face um with a pitch and also got hit in the arm this year um broke his arm and missed about six weeks so you know actually i'm gonna pull willie out i want to be nice to him i don't want him to get hurt um, you can go play golf or something that's a little more less injury prone i don't know <laughs> yeah absolutely less contact um, yes yes for sure um but you know what? i'm gonna put charlie culberson out there charlie culberson played almost every single position he also pitched quite a bit um sure let's put him on a hockey field Honey, hockey, ice, whatever the terminology is. Clearly, it's not a field. <laughs> you imagine them skating on grass with ice skates. That would be um, an absolute disaster. But maybe really fun to watch if the guys don't get hurt. So, yeah, that's my weird Rangers um, starting lineup. And I'm curious who you might pick for um, who you think would be best at baseball on the Rangers team. I think Ben Bishop played some baseball um, and maybe took some, some swings at practice when they had the little, like, crossover day when the stars just yeah. came out and hung out at the Rangers game. That that sounds familiar. And I, I, I can just like see that happening. Um, Cause Ben Bishop is like, obviously with a lot of the NHL, you know, these guys grow up in Canada or, or you know, Finland, Sweden uh, countries where maybe baseball isn't as big, but Ben Bishop is uh, an American citizen. So it wouldn't surprise me if he grew up with a baseball background as well. Mm -hmm. oh, man. So, so this is just like one guy on the stars roster that would be like a really good baseball if you could, player. If you, if you want to pick multiple, I will not limit you. Um, but I will also not picking nine out of a bunch of guys who grew up in <laughs> Finland and Sweden um, <laughs> would be hilariously entertaining, but probably they probably wouldn't be very good at baseball for sure. Yeah. Let, let me, man, I think kind of off the top of my head, I think that Jason Robertson would, would probably be, really good at playing in the outfield another kind of speedy guy so he can cover a lot of ground i can imagine like if he's fast on skates which it's hard to move in skates if you've ever tried ice skating or rollerblading I so have. if he's able I'm to just smart. use his feet on a flat surface uh and he's able to skate fast i can imagine that he can run very fast and he's young um so he has so i'm sure he has a lot of bounce if he needs to run up to the wall uh and you know snag a home run and, and rob someone of a of a home run but i think he also has a lot of firepower whenever he shoots the puck at the goal um, and not that the motion of shooting the puck is the same as swinging the bat, but I'm sure he could find a way with a good hitting coach yeah, to transfer like, that power. It's the core strength, you know? So Yeah, and you move know. your hips and you move your shoulders a little bit. You're just like doing it downward, I guess. It's just, I, you're just, you're elevating the angle, you know? Yeah. I feel like golf and hockey, I mean, Happy Gilmore did it. So like, why couldn't anybody else do it? <laughs> I feel yeah. like my get. I feel like I think Ben Bishop. I, I saw him take some batting practice, makes some decent looking swings. I think Jamie Ben grew up playing a little bit of baseball as well, so I remember seeing him take some BP and looking okay. And I bet, I bet Tyler Sagan would be all right at it too. So if I had to yeah. pick a few, I think I think the uh, the Jason Robertson one. I think that's spot on. I think those other guys, they might be all right too. Yeah, and I think the hockey guys would also, be, especially the older guys like Ben Sagan or even like Alexander Radulov, would be great to have especially like if there's a, a brawl or like a bench clearing because <laughs> hockey players just have no fear. Like even the other night when the Stars were playing Arizona in a preseason game, like there, there were a few fights at the end that kind of broke out. Whereas like baseball, it's like some like whenever the bench is clear, I think they're it's blown out it's of proportion more, more than it's it more of a hold like me back is. kind of situation. Yeah. Unless if man, if they had if they had Jamie Ben there for the um, the 2000 was it 2006 or was it 2000, or 2016? The whatever the, yeah, the Rugnado door, I think. Yes. Yeah, uh, the Rugnado door brawl. Um, gosh, chaos. That would have gotten <laughs> that would have gotten even more out of hand than it already was. If if you like replaced Jamie Ben with Adrian Beltre, like Beltre had to like hold Bautista up <laughs> after the hit. If that had been Jamie Ben, he just would have probably would have been like, no, nah, let me. He would just hit him dude. again. <laughs> yeah. He might have held him up for a second and then been like, no, nah, I don't like this guy. It's like stay down. <laughs> yeah. oh, but thankfully, Adrian was there to to keep Jose from potentially falling and causing further damage uh, to what was already done, especially to to his face, but also his pride as well. Because uh, <laughs> that was a that was man. Rugnet Odor will always just be a well known Ranger in my head for that. I can't name another time that I was like, wow, that was a fun Rugnet Odor play. But that moment, 
made it all worth it. It almost feels like <laughs> it, it absolutely did. And, you know, it didn't end well. And he, he also is playing in the postseason. And in case you missed, he is a member of the Yankees. So therefore he had to shave his face, to, which was very off putting, very upsetting. He looks like, I don't know. Cause, Cause he's always been like basically bald for the last like few years, Yeah, uh, which is not to, not to shame him. Cause I'm sure I'll be there very soon. Not quite <laughs> as young as him, but I also don't have quite as full a beard as him, but seeing him with like the kind of, you know, thinner head of hair and clean shave. It's just an off putting look. Was do you think him or Gallo had the bigger like downgrade of like, oh, that's what they look like clean sh-. like who who was the more like disappointing guy to see have to shave their beard? Um Gallo's beard was like it wasn't like it was about like about what mine like it, he never let it got like full like beardy. Like it was solid, full, not like you know, I don't know, Abe Lincoln yeah, yeah. kind of beard that Runo Dor did. And you know um, objectively speaking, Gallo is a good looking man. He can make just about anything look fine. So like it was a off, like offsetting, like a little off putting, um, a little upsetting, but I, it was definitely more upsetting for him. And then Robinson Torino signed him, um, a, uh, spring training deal with him. So him without his beard also looks super weird. He kept it shaved, um, when he went to the Cubs and now he, hmm. I think he played the end of the season with the Cubs and kept it clean shaved, but that was also both of those two like took pictures together with their clean shaven face. And I'm like, you look like different people. That's weird. I yeah. need you to grow it back. Yankees. It's not 1930 anymore. <laughs> you can't tell people how to like keep their faces. Like it's just stupid. Yeah. It, yeah. Always kind of weird to me. And I feel like it would make more sense if they like were better. Like obviously they kind of squeaked their way into the postseason, So like, they're not a terrible team, but it's like if they were where the Rays are and they're like dominating their division, It'd be like okay, like yeah. If it, I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But no, I say it only yeah. ma- it only matters if you're a firefighter. Those people have to shave their mm-hmm. faces so they can put on the mask to go save people's lives. That's the only time where it's acceptable, unless you're someone's like parents and they're like a 13 year old and they've got like their first little attempt at a mustache and it looks terrible. <laughs> Those are the two times where I say it's acceptable to tell someone else how to shave their face. Also, I guess if you're dating them, you have some input, but you don't have the final say of like you have to do this. Otherwise, you can't play baseball for my team. Mm, very true. Yeah, I myself also having a beard don't like when people tell me to shave. So I don't know. Maybe that's just something that guys have to push to the side when they play for the Yankees. Yeah, I mean, I'd look like a little 12 year old if I played for the Yankees, but I'd also be pay <laughs> getting at least, you know, the the uh, major league minimum of a half a million per year. So if someone wants to pay me half a million dollars per year to shave my face, I will do it. Um, if you're going to pay me less than that, I, I think a quarter of a million dollars a year is the is the lowest I would take for that. Um, but if you want to pay me to do that, then like um, slide in my DMs, email me, call me, <laughs> literally whatever you want to do to get in contact with me. I will I will do that for a quarter million dollars at the very least. Oh, yeah, that, that certainly doesn't sound bad at all. Uh, now that I think about it. So a lot of things to consider. But that is going to wrap up today's very special crossover. Um, with Bryce Patter of Locked On Rangers here um, with with me, Dane, Locked On Stars. I don't know where I was going with trying to introduce myself in the third person, <laughs> um, but there we go. I'll get better with these crossovers as time goes on. Bryce, thank you so much um, for crossing over and, and having this conversation. Uh, a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully um, there's some good storylines for the Rangers this offseason. Maybe some big free agent signings. You never know. You never know. It should be an interesting off season for the, at the very least. Um, thanks for having me on. And you know what? I'm definitely looking forward to hockey season because, you know, dear God, it can't be as rough as this baseball season. <laughs> you you would hope not. And I, I'm having a lot of optimism on my show and even with some of the, my hot takes and predictions that if they're not out already, we'll be going out um, on like the locked on NHL shows and, and social media pages as well. Um, so hopefully the stars don't underperform too much where I look like an idiot, but uh, I also want to be optimistic because I do think they have a really good roster. Um, but yeah. thank you again, Bryce, for being uh, one, on the show. One oh, last thing uh, for uh, those of you who are listening to this on the audio medium, um, where can they find you and your work? I think your uh, Twitter is at Dane with two underscores than Lewis. Um, and if uh, stars fans are listening to this through the audio medium, um, you can find me on Twitter at Bryce Patrick. That's Bryce, Bryce with an I Patrick with no C. Um, Rangers fans, please go follow Dan, Dane, excuse me, I almost called you Dan, um, Dane, <laughs> um, like, like Dunning, but it's last name Lewis, um, and follow him wherever you get your podcasts and also on YouTube as well. 
Yeah, thank you for that. And Stars fans, I, I say the same for Bryce. Uh, he, he gave you his Twitter just at Bryce Patrick, Bryce with an I um, and no C in Patrick. But go give him a follow to get all of your news on the Rangers offseason. And then it'll be it'll be baseball season again before we know it with spring training rolling around in February. Uh, and you won't want to miss out on all the news and updates. Bryce will have you covered there. Uh, thank you again, Bryce. I uh, really enjoyed the conversation. And hopefully we can do this again soon. Absolutely. Best of luck this season. Well, Stars fans, I really hope that you enjoyed that conversation with myself and Bryce Patrick of Locked On Texas Rangers. I know we had a lot of fun recording it um, and hope to collaborate with him and other DFW Locked On sports hosts in the future. Uh, but thank you again for making Locked On Stars your first listen of the day. Now go make your second listen of the day, the Fantasy Hockey Podcast with host Scott Colin, who leans on his decades of fantasy hockey insight and experience every day to help you be the expert of your fantasy league. It's free and available on all platforms wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you again for tuning into today's episode of Locked on Stars. Be sure to tune into tomorrow's episode of Locked on Stars. We will have another guest, another very special guest, none other than Mr. Jeff Kavorsky, uh, the voice of the Dallas Stars in the American Airlines Center, um, a voice that always gets gets me going and gets chills sent down my spine. And I'm sure it's, that is the same for you as Stars fans, if you've ever gone to a game at the American Airlines Center. So be sure to tune in for tomorrow's very special episode with Jeff Kavorsky. Uh, should be a great time, great interview, great conversation with Jeff. Um, and I know you will enjoy it. So be sure to tune in tomorrow for another episode of Locked on Stars. Have a great day, Stars fans.